Okay, so first thing we need to do is to create a new project here in Adobe Premiere. We just click New Project. You can call it whatever you like. We could just call it Video Sketch Demo. And don't mind all the rest here. We can always configure that later. Or you press OK. And now the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we configure the entire workspace so it is the easiest setup for sketching. And depending on which version you run, it might look very different. But up here on the window panel, you have the option of selecting workspaces. And here you can essentially edit to different presets, but you can also create your own. And we're gonna do that right now. I usually start from the editing preset. And what we're mainly gonna do here is that we're gonna make sure that we have a project folder that's up here. We have a source clip monitor here, and we have a program sequence here where we sort of show whatever we edit. And down below, we will have our timeline when there is one. We will have some editing tools where we can, for example, use our razor editor to actually cut out some elements. And we need to make sure that among the tabs over here to the lower left, that we will have an effects panel. This is where we'll apply different stuff like green screen effects, cropping, transitions, and stuff like that. So if you don't have some of these panels, you can always go up to window and then look for the corresponding one here. For example, we need effects controls, we need effects, we need the program monitor, we need the media browser, we need the tools, and we need the audio meter and meters and stuff like that. So always check and reference this video if you have these elements that you need in order to do the video sketching. Now then you can always drag these different panels around. Say if I didn't want my effects down here below, I can always drag them up here and say, okay, I can attach it to this corner if I wanted to attach it here instead. Um, so you can do that of your liking. I always place the effects down below, the project folder where I'll put my files here, the source monitor here, the editing window here, and the timeline here. But it's completely up to you. Just make sure that you have all the elements. And when you're ready, you can click Window once again, click Workspaces, and then Save as New Workspace. And you could call this Video Sketching Workspace, workspace like that. And now whenever, you can always select that as your workspace up here. So that's the first step. Let's try to import some media. When you have our project folder, this is where you import some media. And um, I have here a small one called green screen animation. We have three files and we can just select all the files. Like that. So whenever we ha now have some content, this will be where we can drag it down to our timeline you can see here if I double click, I can see it in my source monitor. We have a nice video here with my colleague Vash. And what we can do now is basically we can drag this video. When we drag it down on the timeline, you can see a small plus icon arrives. And when we just let go of the mouse, it has created a timeline for us. And now you can see over in the upper right corner, that is where we begin to edit. And when I can edit, I will use the effects control. Now that should be located up here and on top. So if I press this and select the clip down here, I click up here, click down on the timeline. You can see I get all sorts of controls for this video. For example, I can scale it. I want to zoom in. Or I can change its position. Or I can just click up here on motion and drag it over here like it was an element inside a photo editor. And we can do stuff like also change rotation and stuff like that. All stuff that will come in handy when we begin to actually do some video sketching. Now, we can, we'll be using a lot of different effects over here. And while we can search, for example, if I wanted to do some um, keying effects of removing the green background, I could begin to search for the different effects. There is a folder here called keying. 
and could sort of figure out and then I would have to find the correct option each time that I want to do some video effects. An easier way of doing this is basically to start out before we do anything and make a video sketching effects folder. And we do that by pressing down here on this small icon when we have selected the effects panel we find this small one called create a new bin. We now created a custom bin. You can just call this something. Let's call it uh, sketching effects. Now right now this is empty. Right now it's empty. But as soon as we begin to drag some things in here, we will make it much easier and much faster to actually do some editing. So I'll show you which effects I'm usually do, using when I'm doing sketching, but you can of course find your own and make shortcuts like I would do right here. So the first thing is that we're often going to crop stuff like these borders away because often we film stuff that we don't want in our videos. So we will find the effect called cropping. I'll just write up here crop. You can see it automatically shows me, okay, the cropping effect is under video effects, under the subfolder transform, and there we have the effect. And I can just drag this effect down here now, and you will see it will show up. And now I have a shortcut to this one in my video sketching effects folder. And just to show you what cropping does is that when we drag it from the folder on top of this video, you can see under the effects control over here, that we got the option to actually cut out elements of our video here. So we can sort of cut out the elements we don't want to see here on the video. So we have something like that now. So that's a crop. Then we will often also be using uh, an effects called mirroring. Oh no, the flip. Different kinds of flip. So that would be our horizontal and vertical flip. We'll put them into our sketching folder two here. Like that. These are what we're going to use if we suddenly want to make a flip like that, turning him upside down. We can just add that effect. We can delete it again. It'll make some things easier for us along the way. We'll also need some of the different um, green screen effects. These are called keys. So we'll just search for key. And we'll be using two different effects. We'll be using the ultra key, which is the most commonly used and most easy to use. Drag that down there. But we will also sometimes have to resort to the color key, which are more fine-tuned, more precise, but also takes a lot longer time to actually apply. So we'll drag this one down too. Okay. Then we will also often be applying some different video transitions. Um, mainly those are found under video transitions and under dissolve. And we have this cross dissolve where images blend together. I think we'll drag that down. And we'll also often use a either a dip to black or a dip to white. So let's drag them down there too. So you can see they show up too now. We will also often be using the um, effect called corner pins. I'll search for that. Just search by corner and you will see under video effects, under distort, you have this option of a corner pin. You can drag that down into our video effects folder too. Um, the corner pin does things a bit different. They actually do it so that if we had, let's say, a background here, file here, but we wanted to distort the perspective of this background, you now you can see it's just a starry night here. If I applied the corner pin now, to this background. You can see it is in front of Vash actually. If I apply that, you can see it shows up here in the effects control. If I just click the corner pin now, you will see up in each corner here in the monitor, I get a couple of icons which weren't there before. You see, shows up as some blue circles here. Whenever I drag those, you can see I can begin to actually adjust the perspective of my video. So we can make some nice effects if, for example, we had something that had a vanishing point or something that actually has to be oriented in sort of a distorted angle. You can see the video inside still plays even though we have distorted it completely.
So this bit can be used to make some nice effects. And we can, of course, also animate each of these. So we essentially create motion while it is distorting. So that's the corner pin. Let's delete this one for, for now here on our timeline. Right there. Okay. So besides having some different ways of using keying effects, we also often need to use some effects on the audio. And mainly we will use effects on audio in terms of fading. So if I find here audio transitions, we will often use this one called exponential fade, where the sound slowly sort of stops in its place. So we will drag this effect down here too. And besides that, when we edit audio, we mainly do it by selecting the clip and looking at the audio it already has. And we can, for example, decrease the volume right up here under the audio effects, under effects control, by just dragging decibels up or decibels down. And we can also animate this so we can sort of create keyframes where we say, okay, from this keyframe to this keyframe, we want it to have faded. And then we sort of have between these two, you can see it begins to change, decreasing the volume. So now we actually have it. Now we have a folder here with the most commonly used sketching elements besides what's already up here the motion, the rotation, the opacity, and stuff like that. And just to show you what we can then do, I could then rapidly make a small adjustment to the image I've already cropped. We could take this ultra key, drag it on top of the video. You see it shows up down here. We can use the selector tool to select a green color we want to remove, like that. And we can do a lot of the adjustments that I'm going to show you later how to do, where we sort of tweak this so that the entire um, background is in the end removed here. Something like, like this, maybe the shadows, maybe a little more transparency, something like that. I think it's going to be okay. It needs to remove a little more up there, like that. You can see what we did now is now Vash here is actually just standing in a completely transparent background. And we could begin to use all the effects we just talked about. I could select the motion up here and we could resize him to tiny, tiny, tiny. Or we could actually rotate him. And we can just do all this stuff while the video is still rolling. So if I wanted, I could now do the basics of, for example, dragging him from the video layer one up to video layer two, and I could add the twinkling stars background. And we can see now he is on a backdrop of a starry night. And I could begin to do stuff like saying, okay, right here, my animation of the motion will begin. So I would just toggle the animation by clicking the stopwatch here and saying at this point, he should have flown right up until the end of the screen here. Like that. Something like that. There he flies. So, as you can see, when we can fiddle around with these different effects, we can begin to actually have many options of creating this video. For example, here we could say, okay, when he reaches the end, we want to shorten our clip by just dragging in the end, or simply by using this razor tool to just cut the video up in two, select here, just delete the rest, and maybe we will use our dip to black effect, drag that from our new folder up onto the clip, and see a nice fade into black, right like that. Okay, so that's the basics of how to set up Adobe Premiere for video sketching and creating a workspace and making it a lot easier to find all of the different effects. Let's move on to the second video where we will try to dive more into green screening.